As Marie mentioned, the sixth accuser came forward after seeing the story about Officer Hayes posted on our Facebook page. She recognized the picture of Hayes there, called attorney Dan Gilly. And Dan, this is your first interview since uh, Hayes was arrested on Sunday. What's your reaction? Well, it's kind of about time, I guess. Um, he wasn't arrested but for my client's case. Uh, she actually called the police first, and uh, they didn't get back to her. So then she called me, um, and I said, well, this is really a criminal issue. And um, I got her in contact with the DA and kind of go into the horse's mouth, so to speak. And um, so the DA is where it's going to happen. Uh, I don't know that they've even filed charges yet, the DA. I know he was arrested yet yesterday and booked on four other charges. But that's where, you know, the rubber is going to meet the, the road, so to speak, and see what happens today with the DA's office, see if they actually file charges. Can you tell us more details on exactly what she says happened? Uh, I'm kind of, I'm a little leery of giving details um, other than what I've said so far, but I can tell you that um, it was back in October 2012. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is going back a, a ways. Um, and, you know, she, when it, when it happened to her, she was just uh, humiliated and degraded, but really didn't think anybody would believe her. But he, um, he came in contact with her, got her in his car in the front seat and drove her home and outside of her house is where he said, listen, you either do this or, you know, things are going to be, you know, bad for you. And her, the way she took it was she was going to jail. So it was basically oral sex or jail, and she chose um, oral sex. And, uh, you know, again, just didn't think anybody would ever believe her. She did tell her family when his face popped up on channel, it was actually channel 10 on her Facebook. She immediately recognized it and said to her family, this is the guy. And they said, listen, you need to go to the police. And so she called the police and they just didn't get back to her. Now, I don't know exactly who she, she left a message for, but you would think that would be a hot item for them to call her back. And Especially she, in light of the Rebelos. Right, situation. right. So, you know, it's one of these things where um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad one. Uh, you know, Anthony Rebelos never, as far as I know, did anything like this. I think a lot of people wonder the, the choice that was made. Usually it would be because there's something very serious that you're facing that you know you could get in trouble for mm -hmm. to feel the, the pressure to, to have to do something like that as opposed to saying, go ahead, you know, take your best shot. I'm not doing that. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you give us some insight into why she felt so much pressure? Well, you know, with, with the Anthony Revelos situations, there was uh, a lot of those were just DOIs. And I say just DOIs, I mean, um, but these women were doing things for that level of but it's really more of a fear thing. And if you're inside, if you're, you're in the presence with a guy with a gun and a badge, um, and with my client's demographic, she's a, a young woman um, and, and lives right over, right over here, close to where, uh, where you are. And um, it was really more of a fear thing. You're in a car with a guy that's willing to do this. Um, you know, what else is he willing to do? And at that moment, it was just a, a judgment call. Dan, you made a, a moment a second ago talking about comparing it to the Revelos series of crimes. And you're right, this is much more serious. In fact, the ones he was arrested on so far, Hayes, mm -hmm. had to do with inappropriate searching, using mm -hmm. the flat of his hand instead of the edge of his hand. This is much more serious than that. Much more serious. Um, I expect there's going to be other women coming forward. But I can tell you, it's not something that my client is like, yay. I get to tell my story yeah. is something she's f still very humiliated about. Um, so there's going to be a number of women that won't come forward and say, listen, no one's going to ever going to hear about this. I put it behind me and I want to move on. Mm -hmm. I hope he gets what's coming to him. But, you know, Anthony Revelos was a, it was a bad one. Um, it was, it was, but it was, it was bad from the standpoint, did it for so long yeah. with so, so many people within the police force knowing it. Well, let me ask you about this too. Uh, Hayes's father-in-law, Mark Jones, is an assistant chief. Yeah. And, and this is the second big black mark potentially against Lansdowne's uh, uh, time yeah. as chief. What, what's this going to do to the whole force? Uh, well, I think it's going to, I mean, you know, in some ways, uh, some ways Mr. You know, Mr. Hayes victimized my client, obviously, but he also victimized his fellow officers. There's a lot of guys out there that are just doing their job and um, doing it honestly and, you know, taking their, their job seriously. I mean, this is an honorable position and Mr. Hayes didn't treat it that way. But I think that um, to the extent that it can take another bad cop out of the force and let these guys get back to doing their job without the distractions, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be helpful. I don't know what's going to happen to Chief Lansdowne. There's no way that he would ever have known about my client when he gave that statement the other night saying there was no skin-to-skin -skin contact. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, I, it's not my, really my position to say what's going to happen to the police force. I can tell you, though, I mean, this stuff happens all the time. It's been happening forever. Um, police have a lot of power. 
And when you get bad people, you know, there's bad people in every industry. Sure. When you give them guns and badges, you know, what they can do is much more harmful than the rest of us. We've mentioned that you represented a number of Arevalos victims. Yeah. What do you think in terms of financial liability for the city in this? Well, this one's going to be more costly because of the amount of notice that they should have had. Um, so I, I think this is going to be actually, uh, it's going to kind of put the Arevalos situation in a insignificant uh, light from the standpoint of how much money it's going to cost. Um, that's my prediction. That was two and a half million or more. Yeah, it? yeah. Well, I, I settled the, the the eight eight clients I had, you know, settled for in excess of a million dollars, but it wasn't, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Um, and I, who knows what's going to happen? But I, I think that there's going to be a lot more women coming forward, the ones that have the courage to do it. And um, you know, I think it's only time will tell. I think this week will be a probably important week. When you say prior notice, you mean that because it happened once in the force, the force should have been much more to yeah. it and much more responsive to the accusations. Right, right. I mean, there should have been, there has to have been people out there knowing. Well, we know, well, we know <laughs> that uh, Mr. Hayes had a r serious problem in the, in the academy and that he was just, you know, there was serious problems. Tell, tell the viewers about that. Well, I, I know that, you know, in, at the academy, the field training officers um, zeroed in on Mr. Hayes and said, this guy shouldn't be on the force. And... Um, and those, those, that, checks and that check and balance is really important. Make sure that bad cops don't get into the force. They weed them out first. That was over, overridden and, um, because of the nepotism, essentially, which is the same thing we had about you know, two years ago. A, a kid down in Pacific Beach was, uh, assaulted a woman. Instead of giving a, getting a, giving a ride to a jail, he was given a ride home because he was the son of a captain. So it's just that sort of stuff happens in e everywhere. It's just that San Diego, the spotlight is on it right now. And someone needs to sign a signal to these guys is like, listen, if you see another officer doing this, report them yourself. Don't just wait until this blows up again. Because you know, it just, just gives gonna, me chills. Dan, yeah. this, this whole thing gives me it's chills. Scary. It's scary for all of our, I have lots of, I have lots of daughters <laughs> and a you know, wife and I just, uh, I don't, it would not, I don't feel good about my, uh, my loved ones out there right now. Um, and it's, and it's unfortunate because 99% of the, the cops out there are, are great guys. They're only trying to do their job, and it's, and it's just making it so much worse for them to have this sort of situation going on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point to make. We want, just want to make sure that that is the case and that if, if there is a situation where somebody is, you know, going off, yeah. and we don't want to make it seem like it's in th the entire of course. Not. Yeah, of course not. Dan Gillian, thank you very much for getting up early, coming in.